Hello, today it's a special day because we have got Tika teaching English with me from, uh, from the UK. She's an English teacher on Instagram and it's going to be an interview with Tika teaches English about her teaching English, her opinions about teaching English and her opinion about English learning. So it's going to be a collaboration today. First question is, what led you to teaching via IG, Instagram? So many of my friends aren't English native speakers. Many of my friends are from Germany or from France. And also my fiance is South Korean. So even my fiance is not a native English speaker. Teaching them fun aspects of the English language and correct sentence structures and grammar has just been something I've always done just as a friendly thing. But they suggested I also do it on Instagram and that's what started my Instagram channel. Second one, what do you think can truly help a non-native speaker to master the English tongue besides residing in a native environment? I think there are two main ways that will truly help. The first one is finding a way of learning that is fun. Learning a language shouldn't feel like a chore and if it does, you need to find a different way to study because if you don't enjoy it, then you're not going to want to do it. The second one is immersing yourself but to the next level, only speaking the language you want to learn, only surrounding yourself with people who speak the language you want to learn. There's no point moving to America to learn English, but being surrounded by people who speak in your mother tongue daily, like Spanish or Korean or German, because then you will just naturally still speak in your mother tongue. Third question. What do you think a non-native speaker should mostly focus on when learning your mother tongue? I think the most important thing should be grammar and sentence structure. Many people try to focus on perfecting an accent, but actually I can understand non-natives speaking English with a thick accent from their own country more so than I can understand a non-native speaking with a great British accent but completely wrong grammar or really confusing sentence structures. Fourth question. What do you think about phrasal verbs as non-native speakers find them extremely difficult to learn, remember and incorporate into their daily vocabulary? Phrasal verbs are really quite difficult, but they are really important to learn. Phrasal verbs are used all the time in English. However, if someone says a phrasal verb to a non-native speaker and the non-native speaker indicates that they don't quite understand what the person has just said, then often the native speaker will change their vocabulary or the way that they give instructions so that the non-native person will understand. So they are important to learn, but people will adapt their vocabulary if you don't understand them. Fifth question. What do you think about collocations and idioms in English language? Can they be mastered by a non-native learner? Idioms are fun. I don't think they can be mastered. I'm an English native speaker and I honestly don't know the meanings of all of the idioms in the English language. 
They are great and they are fun, but they're not used all the time in everyday conversations. So not understanding or using idioms will not change people's perceptions of you as a non-native speaker. Sixth question. As the UK is one of the most diverse dialect and accent pools in the world, do you think exposing ourselves, I mean, uh, non-native speakers to different kinds of English accents and dialects, um, like Yorkshire accent, Lancashire accent, or Birmingham, Newcastle, Geordie, Liverpoolian, whatsoever, is it a useful method to submerge into the depths of English language? And has it got any benefits? Submerging yourself in lots of different accents can be helpful in some ways. It's really good for listening practice because you will be open to hearing lots of different English accents and the different vowel sounds and slang that people make in different regions of England or America. However, it can also be quite difficult and confusing as an English learner to submerge yourself in lots of different accents because slang that is used in one region may not be used or understood in a different region at all. So when you're a new language learner, I definitely think it's best to stick with one accent and surround yourself with that one first. And then if you like, you can surround yourself with lots of different accents and learn all the fun quirks of those. And the last one, thank you very much. Last one, the seventh question is, a plethora of non-native teachers. I find, at least in my home country, look down upon slang terms, everyday English terms, which I myself don't agree with. And when non-native learners bump into native people who use off-book terms, they often feel perplexed and flummoxed. What do you think should books include more? Should books, course books, include more of these expressions and terms and slang words and any kind of off-book expressions. I think that slang should be added to textbooks because non-natives often use textbooks to learn and study and slang words are used all of the time in English. Sometimes if people use the full versions of words then it seems almost more unnatural than using the slang version. 